Hello everyone. So I've been using the DualSense Edge controller for a couple of weeks now and I wanted to take a look at how it compares to another pro PS5 controller, the Scuf Reflex FPS. Both of these controllers are full of features and both have pros and cons based on your playstyle, but I wanted to give you my opinion on which one I think is better. So taking a look at the Scuf Reflex FPS, the design is very similar to the original DualSense controller. However, there are a number of significant changes to make it stand out as a third party controller. Your scuff can be customised in multiple different ways, it's what they're known for, however they charge a premium for this and it's not cheap. The scuff we are looking at today is the pre-customised steel grey and it costs £250. It has the matte rubberized feel to it which feels great in the hand and I really like the micro hexagon design which is referred to as the high performance grip which not only looks good serves a purpose with keeping the controller from slipping, particularly useful for those sweatier gamers. This hexagon design can be found across the L2 and R2, as well as the back paddles, which brings the whole design together and makes the controller look really premium. There are four plastic back paddles. You can tell Scuff has spent a long time on the design, as the buttons sit neatly within the profile of the controller and are comfortable to use. However, from my experience, given they are so close to each other, I have found myself accidentally pressing the inner button, leading to a premature trip to the Gulag. This model of scuff gives you instant mouse-like clicks on the L1, R1 and L2 and R2 buttons. This sets the controller aside from its rivals and without a doubt gives you a competitive edge in first-person shooters. Reducing the travel distance on the triggers saves you precious milliseconds when aiming and firing your gun. However, these are not adaptive triggers so no haptic feedback like the Edge, which you will miss out on in some games. The PlayStation DualSense Edge controller is only available in this one design. I'm not a fan of white controllers as they start to show their age over time, but it's a step up from the original DualSense. The Edge has a black D-pad, trackpad and icon buttons. It's also got a slip resistant material, but only on the inner part of the controller, and it's not as grippy as the scuff. Micro PlayStation icons appear on the trackpad as well as the L2 and R2, which is a nice touch and adds to the premium look. However, on the triggers, it feels like I'm pressing down on sandpaper, so not as comfortable as the scuff. There are only two back paddles or levers as the PlayStation refers to them as. They are made out of metal and are held in place by magnets. Again, they sit neatly within the arms of the controller and they feel just as good as the scuff, if not better. When it comes to the triggers, these can be adjusted to three different trigger stops at a flick of a button something not available on the scuff reflex and something we've only seen on Xbox Pro controllers before. This maintains the ability of having instant triggers as well as maintaining adaptive triggers. However, when comparing the scuff and the edge triggers side by side, the travel distance on the scuff is far smaller than the edge, even on its lowest setting. The travel distance on the edge is 4mm, while the scuff is only 1mm. This is the same for the L1 and R1 buttons making the scuff far superior for when quicker responses in games make all the difference. The four back paddles on the scuff can be remapped to any button on the controller, and you can have up to three different profiles which are indicated by a light on the back of the controller. If like me you only use two of the back buttons, you can remove paddles, however some force is required, and due to the paddles being made out of plastic, it feels like you may damage them, which makes it feel a little awkward to do. However, it's not something you're going to be doing that often. Like the scuff, the back paddles on the edge can be remapped to any button on the controller, and you can have multiple profiles. However, unlike the scuff, you do have the choice of levers or half dome buttons, and from my experience I found the levers more comfortable for long gaming sessions. I also found removing and swapping the buttons a lot easier to do than on the scuff. There's also an extra step in the process to removing the scuff's joysticks. First you have to remove the front plate. You're then able to pop the joystick straight out. However, when it comes to the edge controller, you can just pull the cap straight off and replace. Neither process is particularly challenging, however the edge seems a lot smoother. Both controllers you can mix and match with whichever cap suits your playstyle. The next feature on the edge controller is a game changer. The stick drift fear is real, and inevitably you will get it. However, PlayStation have thought of this, and with a simple release, the joystick module can be taken out and replaced. New modules will set you back £20, however I think that's a reasonable price to pay. If your scuff controller gets stick drift, you have two options. Either you buy a new controller or have it repaired. Both options will cost you more than what the Edge is offering. The Edge has also added some additional buttons below the joysticks called the function buttons. This gives you the ability to change your profiles with ease. It also allows you to control the master volume and game chat mix on your headset. However, I've tried this with both my Sony H9 and the Pulse 3D 
and it doesn't work wirelessly. PlayStation have said it has to be a wired connection, which is a shame as it makes it a redundant feature for most headphones. Hopefully this is something PlayStation will change in a future update. All those additional features come at a cost of weight, and the Edge controller is 42% heavier than the Scuf. At 336 grams, it's a beast. The Scuf is a lot lighter, partly due to it not having a rumble pack. However, the Edge controller is even 19% heavier than the original DualSense. So bear that in mind when playing for extended periods of time. When it comes to accessories, the Scuf falls short. Just one low and one high dome cap is included. You can purchase more, however I feel at the current price more should be included in the box. It also includes a 6 foot braided cable for charging. The edge on the other hand comes in a sturdy carry case. The outer shell is made out of the same material as the controller and comes with 4 joystick caps, 2 low dome and 2 high dome. It also includes a lock for the charging cable as well as 2 different styles of back buttons. The charger is a 9 foot braided cable. The whole case and accessories feel premium and it feels like you are getting a lot more for your money. Both controllers last me around 6 hours of playtime, but that will vary depending on the game and features being used. When you do need to charge, the edge fits nicely on the charging station. The scuff also fits, however it's much harder to do. I would recommend removing the inner paddles if you're not using them. This will make placing it on the charger much easier. With the edge being a first party controller, you also benefit from the software that is integrated into the PlayStation 5. Here you can effortlessly make profiles for your playstyle, remapping buttons, changing stick sensitivity, amending dead zones, just to name a few. You could honestly spend hours creating these profiles. A lot of these features will not be applicable to the average gamer, however it's nice to know they are there. So my final thoughts, both controllers are expensive. At the time of release, the Scuf Reflex FPS is £250, however that can become more expensive based on how you customise it. The Edge is cheaper at £210, however there is only one design available. The Scuf only comes with a 6 month warranty, while the Edge comes with a 1 year warranty. However, I have had my Scuf for almost a year and never had an issue. The Scuf definitely has the competitive advantage with the 4 rear buttons and digital triggers, which gives you faster response times. If you are exclusively playing first person shooters, you'll want this controller. It's the best in the class and beats the edge in that field. However, I found myself playing Warzone and then swapping to my DualSense to play other games, and that became a chore. With the edge, I feel I can use it with whichever game I'm playing, and it'll instantly make the playing experience better. I can still play competitively with rear back buttons and lower trigger stops. With its additional features and software available, it makes the controller an all-rounder. The future-proofing of swappable joystick modules had me sold. The stick drift fear has vanished, Edge does lack any customization with its design, which is a shame. However, I'm sure this is something PlayStation is working on for the future. But from now on, the Edge controller is what I'm reaching for when I boot up my PlayStation. So that wraps it up. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this one.